Hey guys, welcome back to Billy Ray Garage. In today's video, we are doing the Jeep. The fuel tank skid plate, it's rotted out. I've been meaning to do it all summer, but this bad girl took up most of my time. So, as you can see right there in the grass, boop, boop, is our new skid plate, and I'm going to be putting it on the Jeep. So, let me know in the comments if you want some Jeep shit. I know I've been saying I was going to do a kind of reveal video on it and all that fun stuff and a ride and maybe a little off-roading but never got to it especially when the skid plate for the fuel tank is rotting out i don't want to have a full tank of gas hit a couple bumps and it's dragging behind the vehicle <laughs> so doing a slight little turn in this video like i said working on the jeep but don't fret gto's getting attention after i'm done with that so the video after this one will be gto related just to give a little update on the GTO, brake pedal's still soft. My dad's mechanic, who has 50-something years of experience, has told me that some GM vehicles are a little finicky on how you bleed them. So he said try bleeding from the rear driver, front passenger, rear passenger, to front driver. So I'm going to give it a go. I'm gonna use my little vacuum pumper, see if I can pump any air that's potentially in there. And also look into the little e-brake switch, the one that tells you when it's on and off, and just kind of dig around and see what I can find. But that'll be in the next video, if it's successful. <laughs> if not, I might just friggin' chance it and just get it tuned and deal with it. More paw, less jaw. Let's get under the Jeep, see what we gotta do. Alright guys, the very first thing we're going to do is take these Phillips head screws out that are behind the fuel cap. Fuel cap's sitting there. So take these four screws out because when you drop the tank, this is going to have to drop out with it. So let me do that real quick. Alright guys, next you're going to need 13 millimeter socket or wrench. You got four studs in the back a couple of them snapped off previously so i got two that are 13 millimeter and then underneath this tank is crumbling i put the jack under it yeah, let's see if you can see it so there's going to be one two and then there's a third one over here let's see if i can get an angle i think that's it right there i can't tell but there's a third one there jesus this thing is crumbling yeah if i drove this thing anymore this thing would fall apart on me glad i got a new one so yeah, with a jack in position, you're going to take those four nuts off and you're going to lower the tank only a little bit because you got to disconnect the fuel line and the wiring harness for the fuel pump up there. Just real quick, this stud and this stud, they're kind of angled. You're going to leave them on. Those are the tank straps. So leave them on until you get the tank down and then once we get this thing down, we will take those off and transfer them over unless they look like absolute dog shit then i will get new ones which i probably should have just gotten new ones but oh well anyway let's start this process Alright guys, now for the fun part. Uh, you gotta drop the tank down the littlest bit to get past these studs. As you can see, one of them there. And another one right there. And the ones three underneath. You're gonna lower the tank down the littlest bit. Like, get it like an inch or two past here. And as you can imagine, the fuel neck up here is gonna wanna get snagged up on things. So you kinda gotta lower it, finagle that thing, lower it a little more. Just to get enough room to get up top, you can't really tell yet, but there is a fuel line and there is a wiring harness, so we got to disconnect them. And just a little advice, when you're doing the front three bolts, or nuts I should say, impact gun with an extension does the trick. So let's fight this thing and see if we can get it down.
Okay, so we're down a little bit. Let's see if the front cleared. All right, I gotta come down a smidge more to clear the front one, so. Let's see if we can not do that. Nice and easy. All right, cool, there we go. These straps look pretty horrible, so come down a little more. Now, once you get it down far enough, you're gonna to wanna to scooch it back because the, the track bar kind of gets in the way of that front lip that you bolt up in the front of the frame. So I'm gonna end up pulling it back on the jack and hopefully this thing does not come crashing down because this thing's pretty corroded. Scooch it back. This thing's going to be a little awkward. This thing's going to want to tip forward, but that's okay. So we're going to come down a little more. There we go. Hold that right there. Also, you're going to want to scooch this thing towards the passenger side to get this fuel neck cleared. Because that's kind of where we're hanging up right now. Alright, let's see if it's not too dark in here, but you can see the wiring harness, you're going to disconnect that there. And then the fuel line is right there. We're going to disconnect that. Uh, there's not much room in here, so I'm going to do it off camera. And then once I get that disconnected, we'll take the tank the rest of the way down. Now, preferably, you want to have as little gas as possible in here. I have a half a tank, so fuck me, right? All right, guys, I was able to get the fuel line disconnected. I could not get the wiring harness, so I'm going to drop it down lower. There's enough play in the line, and I'm going to try and go from there. Okay, so let's scoot this this way. Because this fuel neck wants a snag, of course. It always does. Check the wiring harness out. So this little red tab goes and connects this harness together. I'll show you when I take it apart. And also there's a little line here. I don't know if you can see that little T right here, but you gotta pull this little bleeder line off or a little vacuum line or whatever it is. Maybe a vent. You gotta pull that out. So now the tank is pretty much free. You just gotta get the filler neck out. And we should be able to drop this thing. Oh, that's the breather for the, uh, the differential. Look at that. I think I just laid that up in there. So, yeah, the little breather, depending where you put it. Get it out of the way. All right, so now this thing will drop. cap back on so you do not get any crap in there all right guys now we got to take these little straps off uh is a 13 millimeter nut right there there's two of them one there one there and then as you can tell there's just like when you put it in you kind of like shove it in sideways and then turn it and it lifts up these straps look like they've seen better days so i'm probably going to order new ones and also another thing you may want to consider is the filler neck. I've had one of these rust out before. So when you fill it up with the gas tank, it would drip down a little bit. And then there were times where I would take a turn and it would just pour out when you had a full tank. So this is also something worth doing while you have it out. Because that is the only way to do this. So yeah, I'm going to order a new filler neck and two new straps. And if these things are paying the balls to get out... You could cut it, because I've replaced these a couple of years ago, probably maybe like six years ago, seven years ago. But they're starting to rust. But if you're having a problem, just cut it. Make sure you don't cut the tank. The tank is plastic. If 
That sounded terrible. As you can tell, this uh, skid plate has been holding itself together by hopes and dreams and prayers. So, that's good. Got a new skid plate over there. Actually, true story, last time I took the tank out, I had a mouse nest in here. <laughs> so, I let it sit a little too long. But that was years ago. I've actually driven it a lot more, more recently. It's just that this summer, I never was able to take the top off because I was just mortified that this thing was going to come apart. This thing is, I mean, look at, look at this. This thing is just, <laughs> it's horrible. All right, I'm going to go on the Amazon machine and order some straps and the filler neck. So that I might as well just knock this entire thing out and just get it done. Then we will go to the reinstall. Two days later. All right, guys, a couple days later, got all my parts in. Got my filler neck and some tank straps. And now we're gonna start getting this thing ready to go back in. So we're gonna start with this. These things get pretty rusty. Uh, when you do it, I'm angling the tank up a little bit so that when I try and pry this thing loose, all the rust stays up here and drops down. Uh, I could not get these hoses anytime soon, so I neglected to purchase new ones. No big deal. I think this Jeep's gonna get an overhaul soon because it is not healthy. Let's bust this thing off and put the new one on. All right guys, take a little screwdriver, kind of work your way around each of these and just, you're gonna slowly work it out. It's kind of a pain in the ass with the hose, but you gotta do what we gotta do. So let's get under here. Let's see, pry this up. And let's see what we can do. All right, they're broken free, so these should come right off. That one's fine. All right, cool, there wasn't as much rust where it was covered, but still, I'm gonna clean these out a little bit. Obviously, smack them, spank them, bitch. Oh! And I'm gonna shove a rag in there and just clean it up a little bit just so no rust gets into the tank, because obviously you don't want to suck that up. Like your mom sucked me up. Daddy, chill. All right, guys, I was going to use motor oil on this, but I don't think there's any need to, so I'm just going to shove it in. Oh, yeah, that went nice and easy. So we'll stop right there, put that there, and then use a little hose clamp here. It's pretty good. And I'm just going to throw a tie wrap around this up here because I suspect that this thing's going to be coming out soon, and I don't have a big enough hose clamp for it so get it on a little bit more there we go and of course don't forget to transfer your cap over all right guys now another fun stuff trying to get the tank into here uh, do yourself a favor orient it the right way so you can just throw it on a jack throw it up and in kind of self-explanatory but let's let it rip, see if we get the tank in, put the straps on, and get this thing ready to go back in. That looks awesome. This is just working. Watch your fingies. Okay, these straps may vary. You may get them, they come with hardware, they don't. These don't, so save your hardware. Now with this, you're obviously going to want to go under these hoses where my hose is at. So we're going to stick that there, stick this here. And then trying to get it in, I'll show you in a second. Trying to get in these holes can be a pain in the ass, especially when the tank's in. You kind of have no other choice but to do that. So do what you can. So I'm going to drop it down and I'm going to see if I can rock the tank back up a little bit. There we go. Now that makes it easier. So now we can get in there and get this guy in there. Right there. Right, cool. So we got that. And then drop the tank back down. Oh, there we go. 
Okay, so now we got that. It's kind of a pain in the ass, but you want to pick this up and bend this in and try not to get your fingies caught. And watch your wiring harness like I'm about to crush. There we go. Okay. Drop you in. There we go. That sounds awful. And then same thing here. Lift up, push in, get it in the hole. Ah, there we go. Cool. All right, so that's in. And like I said, you don't want to reuse your hardware. And use this little guy to run it down the rest of the way. Alright guys, before we go lifting the tank up in here, this is the little gap that you want to shoot for your filler neck. So this is basically the first thing you want to do once you start getting it up into place. Get that ring in here, and then you can do whatever the hell you want with it. Uh, things that get in the way. Uh, this track bar, as you can see the two studs here and here. When you're lifting it up, if you try lifting it up, directly straight up into place you're gonna hit this i don't know how it is with the stock one because i haven't messed with that in a while yeah and also the exhaust so you're gonna have to play with it a little bit yeah if you had an empty tank of gas that would uh help greatly let me get this thing on the jack and we will start throwing it up in place and just uh you know keep your electronics clear and this little vent line that should be all right but that's no big deal and your fuel line is over here and also before you get it up into place, connect this and this before you get it all the way up because there's not a lot of room in here. All right, stand by while I set this up. Okay, up we go. Slide this under here. Now with the gas sloshing around in there, hang on to this because it wants to fall. Now depending which way the tank's leaning, those are the bolts you're going to start first. So if it's leaning back a little bit, you're going to want to worry about the ones on the inside. And if it's obviously leaning back, you're going to want to start these couple bolts that are up here. So pay attention. This one's actually cock it's sitting sideways. Just go up nice and slow, try to line it up. This doesn't seem safe, but the tank's not that heavy, so what's the worst that could happen? All right, guys, got the tank leaning back a little bit, so we're gonna try and hit these little back holes first. So we'll go up nice and slow. Just FYI, I got the wiring harness plugged back in, and I got one of the vent lines for the tank tied back in. I just gotta hook up the fuel line, but right now it's just not close enough, so we'll go up slow. And try and wiggle this thing over. Ooh, that one's in. So is you, so we're gonna go up with it. Alright, so I got a couple of these lined up. Very cool. If they get hung up, just wiggle the tank. Alright, so that's in. So I'm going to start these real quick, just to get them locked in, and then I'm going to worry about the ones underneath. Alright, just a quick FYI, uh, let's say you're taking your tank out, and these stupid little studs break. Once you have the tank out, there's a little lip up here, you can't really tell, but there's a lip up here. You get new hardware and drop it down. If you get one of those like locking bolts with the little square head, that'll work ideally. Uh, like I had to do with this one a while ago. The stupid mosquito guy. And these two were fine. Actually, that one was fine. The end one was fine. This one I had to replace. And this one I had to replace. So if you have the tank out and these things break, no big deal. If the ones in the front break, that's a different issue. So, uh, yeah. 
All right, let's continue on with this, go underneath and see what we got. All right guys, I'm gonna try and show you this the best I can, but this tank is pretty pliable. You can push up on it if you need to. So you got a bolt started there and you could bend this around. It's gotta come up a little more. I gotta try and recenter this jack. All right, so straight up there. That stuff's not lined up, but I got these two. Can't really see them, the track bar's in the way. Yeah, there's one there. And I got the nut started on that one, so I'm hoping that holds it up. And then I can move this lift to the middle of the tank and jack it up a little easier and come down a little bit so I could bend these tabs over. So if it's not lining up right away, and you have a second person, that would help. And then you could be under here, shimmy this into place, go up. All right, guys, got the back end. Zip these guys in. Well, can't see that one, but they're nailed down. And I just gotta get this fuel line. There we go, I think I got it now. All right, that seems legit. All right, cool, got that in. Uh, I just gotta tighten the four bolts in the back. And then we'll try and prime the fuel line and start this bad boy up. Uh, something else I did here, this filler neck was getting caught up down there, so I took the little fuel cover off, which is no big deal. But while we're here, we're gonna stick these dopey screws in first and then mount it back. So you don't have to try and fight that thing while this thing's in. Keep that one a little loose just till you get the rest of these started. Alright guys, everything's back in. Let's uh, prime the fuel system, make sure we don't have any leaks, and fire it up. So I'm going to turn the key a couple times, see if we get some fuel pressure going. Alright, so that's off. Do it again. I hear noises coming from the back, so that's good. And just take a quick peek underneath, make sure nothing's leaking. Nope, nothing leaking so far. Alright, let's see if this bad boy starts up. We're neutral. A little bit on a struggle bus there. Now let's go underneath, make sure we're not leaking. Seems good. Let's do some rev rev. Seems like you're all right. All right, let it warm up a little bit and then we'll go for a ride around the block. All right guys, let's go for a ride around the block. I'm not gonna do anything crazy in this video. It's rush hour right now and it's Friday. Roads are pretty hectic, so I'm just going around the block. I'll just tell you a little bit about this Jeep on our little adventure. Okay, brakes work. <laughs> all right, here we go. Okay, so this, is, so this Jeep, it's a uh, TJ Sport, uh, five-speed manual, six-cylinder, four-liter. I bought it in 2013. I believe it came out of like North Carolina or something. The frame was in good condition then and then I brought it up to uh, the Northeast and it was not happy with the salt because I primarily use this in summertime. I bring it down to the beach and wintertime, obviously snowstorms and stuff. So maybe about five, six years ago, I did a complete overhaul of this thing. I uh, took the body off the frame, cleaned up the frame, and put a rust encapsulator on it, and basically every bolt that's had to be cut off, or every control arm, all that stuff, was swapped out. It rides with shaking baby syndrome, so if you hit like a little bump, you're doing one of these. But that's because the suspension was freed up. Uh, I had stock control arms, it just had like a relocation bracket for the control arms to bring them down lower and a little more forward. It's a good powerful little machine. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of horsepower, but but never been stuck in the snow, so that's good. And uh, I remember when I bought my house, the freaking day I closed on it. Got a blizzard. So this thing was transporting me back and forth between my parents' house and, you know, moving all my stuff in. 
good memories in this thing. And also driving it up to uh, like Albany, New York for work when I was in uh, mobile maintenance, working on power plants. So I'd have to bring it up there and our spring power plant outage was like January 3rd. So yeah, as you can imagine, Albany, New York, it's freezing cold, lots of snow. But yeah, this thing's been uh, pretty reliable. It never, besides the battery going dead, it never had an issue. I actually had one issue. I had uh, the belt tensioner, that thing snapped on me before, or actually the pulley disintegrated, but the thing still ran. And that happened up in Albany, New York. So I was working nights, dropped it off at a shop, woke up in the afternoon, car was done, got my Jeep back. But yeah, ever since I did the overhaul on it, things been riding great, but I guess all good things come to an end. You know, this channel is Billy Ray Garage. I think it needs to be Billy Ray three, four, five car garage, working on that. If I could sell my house, make money on it, buy property, and just build a basically giant garage house, I would do it, trust me. <laughs> Let's go for a drive. Like I said, five speed manual. I haven't driven this thing in a while since the fuel tank was about to fall out. So like I said, just going around the block. I love this thing. I didn't, I rarely got to drive it this summer. I've been working on the GTO so much that I knew this skid plate was in horrible condition and I just never got around to doing it until now. So what little I have left this summer I think it's September 4th right now. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna take the top off and just leave it off for like a month or two. It seems kind of stupid, but as you can tell, I got half doors, I took them off. The doors come off, obviously, it's a Jeep. So basically, I'm just driving the same route I would drive my GTO, trying to get the brakes to work. But unlike the GTO, actually the brakes, it stops, but not the way it should. Now the thing with this Jeep is it has no ABS module to go through. It's just master cylinder to the brakes. So yeah, let it rip. Alright, let's stop here, try not to kill anybody. Yeah, we are clear. But yeah, this thing's awesome. I got 35 inch tires on it. Uh, I have a fake six inch lift on it. And what I mean by fake six inch lift, I got uh, the four inch lift with adjustable control arms and I got the spacers put in the spring. So it's not a true, it is a six inch lift, but it's not, you know, a full blown, you know, everything's on it. Everything on it's a six inch lift. So yeah, just a quick trip around the block. Like I said, nothing seems to be falling apart or dying. I got some bitch freaking tailgating me, fuck her. And we are back in front of my house. So here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Just make her crash. There's my Camry, say hi to the Camry, hi. So like I said, the frame, starting to rust. Uh, I'm starting to compile a dream sheet for this thing and you know which would involve getting a new frame. I would keep this frame and just rebuild it and then make a friggin monster truck or something out of it. Like it would just be a clean slate and do whatever the hell I want with it. My dad's got a big yard at his shop so I can probably hide this frame there if I need to. Uh, but yeah, I would love to get a brand new frame and just take the body and everything and transfer it over and uh, Maybe beef up the engine. I, I think there's a 4.6 liter kit But that's like an entire engine overhaul, which it gives you everything in the kit it Sounds like a good idea But uh, we'll see. I mean, there's obviously LS swap this thing. There's Supercharging it. There's there's a ton of stuff you could do I gotta fix the air conditioning in here too. I don't have air conditioning. That's been gone for a long time. That's why I would drive around with the top just completely off. I would just cover it and 
when it wasn't raining, just rip the top off and go scoot around. All right, so that's about it on this video with the uh, 2000 Jeep Wrangler. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a complete overhaul of this thing. Uh, it's, it's a big task to do, especially by yourself, but I did it once, I could do it again. So like, comment, subscribe. Uh, GTO content is coming back after this video, so do not fret. Uh, just trying this out, see how the, the Jeep's received. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, kids, and I'll see you guys in the next one.